So the Tokyo 2020 Olympics have come to an end, and I'm surprised at how much I was keeping up with the Olympics this year. I think it just so happened that I have access to cable uh, at the current place I live, so it was easy to just put on in the background while I was doing anything. Hello and welcome back to the miscellaneous channel where we do miscellaneous things. I'm Zeleni. I generally cover pop culture, internet trends, and other miscellaneous things on this channel, so subscribe if that's your vibe. I don't love a lot of sports, but the Olympics has a few sports that I get really into, like diving, I like rhythmic gymnastics, which I think is artistic gymnastics now. I love artistic swimming, used to be called synchronized swimming. I am into all like the artistic sports and obviously the biggest of these sports is gymnastics, especially women's gymnastics, which is apparently the most popular event of the Olympics. It's also a sport where the USA has dominated the past few Olympics and I've just been taking a deep dive into all of the content around USA Gymnastics. Obviously it's a very controversial organization. I've learned a lot about this sport and I just wanted to share that with you all. I've watched a few documentaries that are out there about USA Gymnastics that are very recent. Obviously since we're talking about USA Gymnastics today, I do want to give a content warning, a trigger warning for sexual assault, abuse, uh, emotional and physical abuse. These gymnasts have gone through unimaginable things and if that triggers you, just don't watch, don't learn about it, but otherwise just be warned. I think a lot of people are familiar with the USA Gymnastics case involving Dr. Larry Nassar. One of the documentaries I watched was specifically about that whole situation. I'm gonna go piece by piece of media, if that makes sense. So speaking about each piece of media I have watched. It's mostly documentaries or docu-series. Let me go ahead and start with Golden. Golden is a docu-series produced by NBC that follows elite gymnasts in the months prior to the Tokyo Olympics. The docu-series is, I think, six episodes long, and the episodes are like 40-some minutes in length, um, so filling that hour time slot typically in TV. It focuses a lot on profiling kind of each gymnast and their journey to getting to the Olympics. All of the gymnasts they're following in the series are attempting to go to the Olympics or wanting to qualify for the Olympic team but only one makes it. And it was interesting to watch Golden knowing who is on the Olympic team and following all these gymnasts that are very hopeful about getting into the Olympics. I think two of them actually got in. Uh, yeah, I think it follows actually five overall gymnasts and two of them make it in to the Olympics and ended up meddling actually. So it was definitely sad to see these stories, but it, it sort of made it very real about like, how many talented gymnasts are really out there? Behind the final Olympic team, there's so many hopefuls and so many super talented gymnasts that for some reason or another aren't able to make it to the Olympics and they're heartbroken by it. Obviously so, I mean, they work extremely hard. The two gymnasts that are in Golden that made it to the Olympics are Suni Lee, who ended up being a big hero at the Olympics. She stepped up in the all around and won gold and all around and she was a crucial member of the team to get them to a silver medal and then she got a bronze as well in bars i was glad to see her spotlighted in the documentary so i could learn more about her since she had been such a star of these olympics and then the other gymnast that made it was michaela skinner who she's been around for a long time in the USA gymnastics world. This year was a big comeback for her uh, to the Olympics. She was able to make it, but only as a specialist, so not part of the core team that competes in the team competition. She was one of the ones that competes on one apparatus. We also followed a couple of other gymnasts that didn't make it. Morgan Hurd, um, who was like a big world champion, uh, I think in 2019, and she was having a lot of injury related issues and she didn't end up making it. It followed Connor, uh, I forget her last name, but Connor and she's a really young gymnast. She only started training for Tokyo because it was delayed to 2021. She would have been too young in 2020, but she's just a little too 
green and she was already starting to really strain her body training for these olympics so they sort of decided to just push it for the next olympic round i feel like we'll see her later on um and then we also followed laura hernandez who was a big member of the rio team in 2016 she's very like a bubbly personality but we really got to see a different side of her a more real side of her raw and vulnerable i've seen her a lot commentating at the olympics and that's been cool to see i've really liked her in that role so these are the gymnasts we were following in golden i really liked this docuseries in order to understand the gymnastics process to get to the olympics i didn't realize there's like four or five major like meets or competitions leading up to the olympics where the same judges are giving you scores and placing you. All of those performances are taken into account when they're picking the Olympic team at the final competition called the Olympic Trials where they decide who is the team for the Olympics. So I found this very helpful. It provided really good timelines of all of the competitions that happened before the Olympics. By the end of it, we only had a few of the original group of gymnasts actually vying for the Olympics. If in the earlier competitions they start placing poorly um, and getting like low scores, then it's not worth it to go to the Olympic trials if you don't have a big chance. So Golden as a docuseries did a good job. It was shot well. It showed the process in a really good way. It did not touch much on the controversies with USA Gymnastics. It was very focused on these few months before Tokyo. This docuseries is actually free on the Peacock app. I didn't realize till these Olympics that Peacock, which is the streaming service that NBC made, I thought it was a paid streaming app and it is to unlock certain content but a lot of stuff on there is actually free and this golden documentary is totally free it's a docuseries sorry this golden docuseries is free to watch on peacock you just have to download the app you don't have to input any credit card info it's not a free trial um so if you're interested to see sort of the timeline of how things work out in the olympics for gymnasts in the US, and then I definitely recommend it. And I just like to get to know the gymnasts a bit. Like, I try to watch a lot of the actual Olympics gymnastics moments, but you, you don't really get to know them at all in these competitions aside from n getting to know their routines. So it was just cute to get to know them, like uh, beyond just their gymnastics talents. So now let me move on to the next docuseries I watched, and it's kind of, similar to golden it chronicles the same timeline uh, but specifically surrounding simone biles so simone biles has her own docuseries aside from golden sometimes i wish golden had covered everyone on the olympic team um, but i guess simone biles had exclusive rights to facebook so the thing about this docuseries simone versus herself which is a docuseries on facebook watch chronicling Simone Biles and her lead up to the Tokyo Olympics. This series only has five episodes and they're around the 21 minute mark, um, so pretty short documentary episodes. It's less focused on the timeline of competitions. It doesn't go that far into detail the way Golden does. This Simone documentary focuses more on her and different aspects of her gymnastics career a bit. They talk about her start in gymnastics, they talk about her journey to Tokyo, how it's been, uh, how COVID has affected things, about her family, about her relationship. So it's a lot more just like it, we're just learning about Simone Biles, just seeing her journey to Tokyo a bit as well as her personal life. I like this documentary just because I want to see Simone Biles and more of her. I think she's amazing and this docuseries only covers the timeline before Tokyo so it doesn't cover when Simone Biles had to exit the Tokyo Olympic events um, sort of in a last minute way. I don't know if there's going to be more episodes. I kind of hope so. I imagine that would be a very compelling and emotional uh, docuseries to see her in real time when that was all happening but i don't know if that's gonna happen you can see in this documentary a lot of feelings of hers that led up to her making this very brave decision at the olympics so i liked seeing that i felt like i got a lot of insight into 
how she was building up her voice and confidence uh, leading up to Tokyo. I didn't love that this series was on Facebook Watch. I mean, I imagine Simone got a fat check for that and I hope she did because for like the greatest of all time to be on Facebook Watch, like this could have easily been on HBO or Netflix of uh, docu-series and they just Simone Biles on Facebook watch like I had to watch it on my phone and I was just like I hate this I imagine it was just like the money was best with Facebook but I don't get why Netflix or HBO or whoever couldn't offer her more <laughs> like Simone Biles deserves a lot <laughs> and a big paycheck for documenting her life in this way so anyway I did not love it being on Facebook watch it was just harder to get to and felt less like worthy of Simone Biles you know what I mean anyway so those things aside I did like just learning more about Simone Biles we did learn about her feelings around Larry Nassar and that abuse and how it took her a little longer to speak up to admit what happened to herself but this is a, the important moment I was talking about where I saw her confidence building up about the kind of power she has over USA Gymnastics. One of the most interesting parts about this documentary was Simone Biles was having a video chat with Ali Reisman who was on the team in 2016 and 2012. Rio was her last Olympics so she's moved on to more activism. She was one of the victims that testified against Larry Nassar so Simone Biles was talking to her and they Simone was saying that she's always scared to speak up because currently she is trying to get to the Olympics under USA Gymnastics. She has a very complicated position with USA Gymnastics because she still has to go and represent them at the Olympics in Tokyo yet she has all this rightful anger towards them or frustrations towards them for what happened to her under their care. She talks about the moment that she came out about also being an abuse victim of Larry Nassar and she also mentioned how she wasn't looking forward to going back to this camp where the abuse happened where all of the Olympians and wannabe Olympians have to go to this camp. The camp is run by Bella and Marta Caroli and they, they're like a married couple from Romania uh, that trained one of the first young gymnasts. We'll get to talking more about them in the next documentary, but Simone Biles basically said, I don't want to go back to the Carolis camp where I got abused. She said, I'm not looking forward to it um, because she has to relive a lot of these traumatic memories. Within like a day, USA Gymnastics finally cut ties with this Caroli camp. This camp is known for being very abusive, very like fear-based training uh, towards their gymnasts. Because they've had a lot of successful Olympians that have come out of there, they sort of excuse all of this physical and emotional and everything kind of abuse just because it works and is successful in getting the U.S. gold medals. But Simone Biles talking about how she is not looking forward to going back to this camp where this abuse was allowed to happen to her was enough for USA Gymnastics to finally cut ties with this abusive camp. And that's a huge deal because everyone knew how abusive this place was and no one did anything about it. But Simone Biles is the best gymnast they have. She's the face of gymnastics and that's what she sort of ended the docuseries talking about and that she has a lot of power as the current face of gymnastics. Because she is so good at the sport, she doesn't have to conform to their stupid rules as much. She's able to rebel a bit or break stereotypes in the sport. People are watching gymnastics to watch Simone Biles. So I'm glad she realized her power and I think that realization that she had power to impact the world of gymnastics in a positive way really set her up for this big decision she had to make in Tokyo. Not just her, but her medical professionals around her also decided this, that wasn't just her. She is so powerful to be able to make this decision to step away uh, from the competition because she was just not in the right physical and mental state to do so. Watching all of these docuseries from Golden to Simone versus herself to seeing uh, Michaela Maroney, another gymnast, talk on social media, 
Gymnasts are always competing on injuries and physical ailments. Like, even Golden, which I think was, as a docuseries, very, like, tame on what it was exposing. It wasn't, like, about all the controversies. It was about just the gymnasts. So many of those gymnasts had major injuries. They were just training, you know, 12 hours a day on. And serious things like torn ligaments, shattered bones, and broken toes. Like, it seemed like every gymnast that competes in at the elite level has broken toes <laughs> and is competing on broken toes and i'm just like literally how that was wild to learn both in simone versus herself and golden i don't know if y'all remember this but uh, when i was younger i watched this teen movie called stick it it was at a time when the world was obsessed with gymnastics for some reason um i, I think it was like late 2000s this movie was what showed me how intense gymnastics was and it's a fictional movie it's a teen movie it's kind of a drama though not like a comedic teen movie as much about this girl who's rebellious but really good at gymnastics and is trying to come back to the sport after pulling out of a big national competition moment. Anyway, there's a montage where the main character is explaining gymnastics in a way that's like showing how difficult it is. You know, these athletes train harder than Navy SEALs and do it in a tiny leotard and smiling all the way. Definitely both Golden and Simone versus herself showed me how real sort of that movie was. And obviously that movie was you know, a fictional movie, it's not exact, but it really is that intense. I think a lot of gymnasts would have succumbed to the pressure that Simone had on her shoulders and performed even though it would be life-threatening just because their coach pushed them to or because their fans pushed them, whoever, and Simone just said no. I think it just shows the power of saying no, and I think saying no is something a lot of people struggle with. Um, and I um, feel like Simone is for a long time going to be this role model and beacon of advocating for yourself and saying no, um, no matter what the stakes are. If it's sacrificing yourself, your body, your health, your mind, then it's just not worth it. Sort of on that note, I want to talk about Michaela Maroney, who she was a gymnast at the London 2012 Olympics, famous for making this viral meme of her making a face at the podium. It's kind of a funny meme, but also I feel so bad for her. I mean, honestly, it's so hard after learning everything we've learned about USA Gymnastics not to just feel for these young gymnasts that were going through so much and still expected to win gold medals <laughs> on top of being abused uh, every day. But Michaela Maroney has maintained a very strong social media presence and she did a very cool Instagram live. Um, I think it was the day of the event finals when the USA gymnast Jade Carey, who did the vault for USA, I didn't actually see it, but she messed up really bad. And then she got gold the next day on floor. So it was kind of like the announcers were like, oh, she came back after that bad vault <laughs> um, and won gold. But anyway, so Michaela Maroney went on live to sort of defend what happened to Jade Carey. In this live, she talked about her vault performance and how the way they do vault is very unsafe for gymnasts because they make them wait for a long time without being warmed up and warming up is crucial to gymnastics according to Michaela. Vault especially is the one event where they're not allowed to be warm or they have to wait a long time to go. So she talked about her vault performance where she did great in London but she actually admitted that she had a broken foot that the doctor which was Larry Nasser was lying about that telling everybody it wasn't broken and it was. She had a concussion because Marta Caroli, that's the lady that runs that ranch camp in Texas that is um, very abusive. She made her do a, some balance beam routines and she fell in her head. I don't know when she got the concussion actually. I think she got the concussion a few weeks prior and the balance beam routine was where she broke her foot at the Olympics. So the, the broken foot was at the Olympics and the concussion was like a few days prior. Her concussion was so bad her nose broke um, and was broken. She had the broken foot and she 
still went out and competed on that vault which was just so tragic to hear about like she was going through so much and still performed amazingly on her events um while being literally broken in various places of her body i feel for her i'm glad she is out of that that she got a really good gig for Geico. I hope she made her money there. Yeah, this is a very interesting Instagram live. She still has it up on her page um, if you want to check it out. And the final documentary I wanted to talk about, it is a documentary movie that is on Netflix. It's original to Netflix that came out in 2020, and that is called Athlete A. And this documentary is all about the Larry Nassar case and how that all went down. This was a very interesting documentary. I mean, it was very informative. It seemed like it was filmed like, kind of in real time because they filmed a lot of the reporters at the Indiana Star. I think that was the paper that broke the news about first USA Gymnastics covering up sexual abuse allegations in general across the organization. This documentary was very informative. It was a solid standard documentary. They had interviews with the attorneys that um, helped the victims and the detective that helped the victims. We follow a few of the survivors of USA Gymnastics abuse. Um, one of them was an Olympic hopeful um, named Maggie Nichols, who should have gone t to the Olympics, but because she reported Larry Nassar to higher ups at USA Gymnastics, started getting, you know, blacklisted from USA Gymnastics. Her scores deserved an Olympic spot and they didn't give it to her just because she was speaking out about this abuse and only a, like she just reported it because she thought that was the right thing to do or her coach thought so. This documentary just made me so angry. I mean obviously it's so tragic and it just showed me how corrupt USA Gymnastics is and honestly Fuck USA Gymnastics, like literally so horrible. Like I can't believe so many people just covered up for this man and let him abuse over 500 victims. It was definitely tough to watch. It's a very heavy documentary, um, but it does a very thorough job of telling the stories and how it all happened and got exposed. I mean, it was very brave of the original, I think her name was Rachel, that came forward first and publicly forward because at first a lot of the victims and survivors were coming out as anonymous because they were just so scared of retaliation. And that's what was so horrible about USA Gymnastics as an organization. They really exploited these young girls who had big Olympic dreams and anything they would do out of line for them like out of line like complain or report any misconduct they would be threatened with their dream being taken away this documentary also went into how usa gymnastics and gymnastics at the olympics has changed uh, throughout history there was actually a pivotal moment in 1976 nadia romanici um won gold. Before this point, gymnasts were grown women, like in their 20s, I guess. They, if you see pictures from pre-1976, um, a lot of the women competing are very mature looking compared to what we're used to seeing in gymnastics. And then after Nadia came along and the Carolis that made that camp that was very intense and harsh and abusive. The Carolis were actually Nadia's coach. So Nadia wins gold, coached by the Carolis. That changes the sport forever. And eventually those coaches moved to Texas to start this big camp. And this became like a requirement to go to to train for the Olympics. So it was after Nadia came along that the sport became about very young girls. They also mentioned how younger girls were easier to be controlled and manipulated by the coaches in order to work harder. And Simone even mentioned that in her documentary that as she gets older, she lets less things slide and uses her voice more in her gymnastics training and everything in her career. A young girl is not going to be able to speak up or feel comfortable speaking up because they trust that adults are 
doing the right thing or that this is just what they have to do to be an Olympian or whatever. So it's just so sad to see how the sport transitioned to being women participants to girl participants, like very young girls that are way more vulnerable to abuse in general of any kind. So it's definitely a fascinating documentary. It's definitely heavy. So just be prepared for that if you're intending to watch it, but I do recommend it. I think they did a really thorough and great job. There was also this moment in this documentary talking about this one woman. Oh crap, what was her name? Oh, she's a woman that, or a girl, I think she was young, that did a vault on a broken foot and won for the US um, and was hailed as some big national hero for this um, sacrifice <laughs> of her body. And it just like emphasized this culture of competing through any injury regardless of how dangerous it really is. So it's a really good historical piece to see how it has evolved to this madness and intense training style for these girls. I mean, I hope there's change happening. We learned a little bit about like the new president in the docuseries Golden I talked about, but it's just, after watching this documentary, I have very little trust in USA Gymnastics. Like I just, they're so corrupt and I cannot believe they did this um, and allowed this to happen. So they're gonna have to have a clean record for a long time uh, for me to trust them. So fuck USA Gymnastics. And I know Simone Biles has been also like liking tweets like, talking about that, how USA Gymnastics is messed up. I feel like we're gonna hear a lot from Simone once she retires officially. She hasn't mentioned if she's trying to do Paris or not. She's in her docuseries, she seems pretty over it. I don't know if we'll see her at another Olympics, but after the Tokyo ones, she was like, maybe, <laughs> we'll see. Um, but I bet when she retires, she's gonna have a lot more to say. So that's all I have for the media I've watched around USA Gymnastics. Please let me know in the comments below if I have missed any content. These are the main pieces of content I've seen surrounding USA Gymnastics lately, um, but I'm sure there's more out there. I think I got a good comprehensive look. We got Golden, which was, very 2021 about the lead up to Tokyo, what it takes to get there exactly. We had Simone Biles versus herself, seeing how Simone is handling everything in her journey to Tokyo. She's such an interesting person and such a talent that I think people just wanna hear more from her. And then Athlete A was the documentary surrounding the Larry Nassar case and sort of a bit of the history of gymnastics and how the culture became so toxic. I wish we had seen any documentary coverage of Jordan Childs. Jordan Childs was part of the team and at the Olympics and she is Simone Biles' best friend on the team it seems like and she seems really cool and fun and I'm just like I want to hear from her I haven't she's like the only one I feel like I haven't gotten to know really well please let me know what you think of any of these pieces of media if you've seen them or just about USA Gymnastics about any of the gymnasts I've talked about I would love to hear about it please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed I put out new videos twice a week about pop culture internet trends and other miscellaneous things and you can follow me at miscellaneous on Twitter or Instagram to find out about new videos or just turn on the bell notification here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!